Paula with Exercise 101 today. I want to thank you for joining, for joining me for class as always. Please remember to consult your physician prior to starting any new exercise regimen. Please also remember to wear good, comfortable clothing when taking this class. You want something that's breathable, both pants and a top, okay? And make sure that you have good support in your clothing. Um, also, be sure to listen to your body. So if we do a move or an exercise that doesn't feel good to you, feel free to stop that exercise and either go down to the regression if we are in a progressed position or progressed exercise, or simply stand, stop for a minute and take a couple of deep breaths and then re-engage um, with the class when you're ready. Be sure to follow the UMBC Rec on our YouTube channel as well as on our Instagram page. And I hope that you are continuously doing the things that we've already talked about so that we can continue to build on what we've already learned and what we're already practicing so that we may grow and get better each time we're together. Today we're going to talk about a couple of things. One thing we're going to talk about is assessments and the other thing we're going to talk about is stretches. But before we get into both of those, I want us to start our warm-up. So for a warm-up, remember I mentioned to you that we want to get the blood flowing and then we want to stretch the muscles. So for our warm-up today, we're going to march in place. So remember, we started off with our low impact march with our feet close to the ground. Feel free to start with me as I demonstrate, or you can wait until after the demonstration to start with me. So we started with our march low to the ground. We made sure that we felt good and comfortable in our ankles and our knees before we started that march. And then as we progressed in our march, we started to bring our knees up and create a 90 degree angle. So our march looked a little bit more like this. It was a little bit slower and higher. We had our arms either at our sides or out in front of us, okay? And stop if you started with me. Now, that's going to be a part of our warm-up. That's going to be the cardio piece of our warm-up, okay? Remember, cardio is meant to elevate your heart rate just a little bit. And then, in all that elevating elevation of the heart rate, we're getting the blood pumping, boiling up, running through our heart and through our muscles so that everything can be nice and warm and ready to stretch when we get to the stretch portion of our warm-up. Okay, so the way the warm-up is going to work today, we are going to march it for a minute and then we are going to kick it forward for a minute. So with our kicks today, which is something um, a little bit new, we are not deviating too much from the march. The only thing is instead of lifting our feet up and down, we are simply kicking them forward. Okay, it's just a little kick. This is your low impact kick. Okay our regressive kick closest to the ground and we, if you want to get a little bit higher in our kick we can do that as well and all we're going to do is we're going to slow it down first and we're going to kick forward okay i'm also going to turn to the side okay kicking forward arms can be at your side on your hips or in front of you Okay, so we talked about the march, progressive march. We talked about the progressive march. Okay, we've talked about the low impact kick, and we're going to talk about we talked about the high impact kick or progressive kick. So the regressive kick and the progressive kick. Okay, when you do that progressive kick, make sure you're not leaning back in order to get your leg up. If when you do that progressive kick, this is the height of your kick, stay there. As you grow and develop the muscles throughout your body, your kicks will get higher, okay? All right, then we're going to go into our arm circles. We've done that before, circling our arms forward and circling our arms back. Then we're going to do our reach up. So remember, we always stretch our arms up. Fingertips to the ceiling, palms are open. So my hands look like this when they're up in the air. Palms are open, pulling our belly button in. And then we transition into our stretches. So from the reaching up, we then hinge and touch our toes if we could reach them. 
or ankles or shins or knees. There is no standard in regards to your hip hinge and you touching your toes. You don't have to touch your toes. It's just a way to gauge, to cue you to where I want you to be. So remember, we're reaching down and simply stretching the back of the legs. Wherever the muscle in the back of the legs limits us is where we're going to be for that moment. So if the limiting of that back leg muscle is here where our hands are in front of our shins, that's fine. If it's here in our knees, that is also okay. Just make sure you pull your belly button in. But if your core and your back and your hips allow you to come all the way down to your knees, I would like you to come all the way down to your knees, okay? Then we roll up nice and gently so that we don't get dizzy. So that is pretty much our warm up. And we're going to repeat that warm up at least three times. So if you haven't had a drink of water or you don't remember to bring water with you to class, I want you to go and grab some water, take a sip, and then come back and be ready to engage. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start with the march. Are you ready? So make sure you have space around you to march and then there's nothing gonna hinder you from the transitions that we're gonna make. So in five seconds, we're gonna start with a low impact march. Four, three, two, one, belly button pulled in, low impact march. I choose to have my arms at my sides with my elbows bent at about a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. My arms are bent, so my elbows are at a 90 degree angle. My palms are open. I'm moving my elbows back and forth. It's a little march. It's nothing too cumbersome, okay? Very good. We have about 20 more seconds. And we're going to stay right here with this regressive march just to get warm. 10 seconds to go, okay? Remember to breathe in your nose, out through your mouth. Four, three, two, one. Now let's go to the kick. So kick forward, kick, and kick. We're also going to kick for a minute. Okay, my arms are pretty much in the same position. This time I've allowed my wrist to relax, okay? And I'm just hanging out here, my regressive kick, enjoying my uh, kick forward. Nothing too much. Breathing, slowing my heart rate down if it got too elevated too quickly. Good. 20 seconds here. Stay right here, still holding your belly button. Still allow your hips to engage, move through the hips. Okay, the hip is lifting the leg, the knee is allowing the kick to move forward, your toes to kick forward. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Let's go to arm circles, circle forward. Good. Inhale and exhale. Good. And in five seconds, we're going to circle backwards. Three, two, and one. Change directions. So when you do your arm circles, you choose how wide you want your circle to be. Just make sure that your palms are open, your fingertips are ex your fingers are extended and not curled, okay? And make sure you're breathing. You're nice and stable on your feet. You don't have a rock going forward or your rock going back, but you're nice and stable on your feet. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. And let's bring our arms up. Reach up, palms forward. Fingertips stretched up. Pull your belly button in, and now we are going to hinge or try to touch our toes. Remember, only go as far as your back leg muscles will allow you without bending your knees. So take a breath in if you need to. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. Hang here for a few seconds. Feel the stretch in the back of your legs. And just breathe. Tuck your chin. Allow your chin to hover over your chest. And in five seconds, we're going to roll up. Four, 
three, two, one. Roll up. Good. And come back to your start position. Now let's go back to our march. But this time we're going to do 30 seconds regressive march and 30 seconds progressive march. Okay? So let's get ready. So I'm going to turn sideways so you can see my transition from my regressive uh, march to my progressive march, from my regressive kick to my progressive kick. Okay? And again, feel free to take sips of water in between to kind of get your body acclimated to all the movement and to make sure you're staying hydrated. All right, here we go. We're going to start in five seconds. Regressive kick for 30 seconds. Progressive kick for 30 seconds. In two and one. So kick and kick. This is our regressive kick. Place your arms where you need them to be, where they are not the focus, but your kick is the focus. Pull your belly button in, look forward, have that good posture from the waist up. Keep your spine nice and tall. Good, you have 10 seconds. Then we're gonna go to the progressive kick. In four, three, two, one, and kick. Kick, 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 good. 30 seconds here. And then we're going to go to the march, our regressive march, then our progressive march. We're halfway there. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, low impact march, or also called regressive march for 30 seconds. It's a little bit faster. When we get to our progressive march, we're going to slow it down so that we have good form. And we're keeping our spine nice and tall, just like we did in our kicks. We got five more seconds here. Four, three, two, one, and lift it up. Good. Pull your belly button in, okay? This is also warming up your core. Just 30 seconds. And it's not even a full 30 at this point because you've been doing it for about 10. Keep going. Five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Now arm circles. Arm circles forward. Good. Breathe. And arm circles back. We're going to alternate between the two. Three, two, one. Let's circle forward again. Keep your fingers stretched out. You'll feel your bicep muscles start to wake up, as well as your forearm muscles. Make sure you keep your arms shoulder height. Don't have them down here circling or way up here. But let's say shoulder height. Let's go backwards. Try to stay nice and stable. Keep your feet about shoulder width apart. Remember to breathe, bringing down our heart rate just a touch. Inhale, exhale. Good, one more set going forward and backward. Three, two, one, circle forward. Good. And we're going to get ready to circle back in three, two, one. Arm circles back. Very good. And three, two, one. Arms at your side. All right. That was the second time we did that warm up. We're going to do it one more time. The reason why we're doing this warm up multiple times is we want to make sure the body is good and warm for what we're going to do today. We never want to try to work out a cold body or a body that hasn't adequately been warmed up because that could result in injury and that injury could be very serious. So we want to always take care of our body. We never want to push it past where our body is telling us that that is the place where it needs to be, okay? Push it past its limit where it's telling us that's where it needs to be. Now there will come a time when you want to increase 
your workout, where you want to build your endurance, where you want to build more muscle, and you pushing yourself will help you to get there. But don't do it before your body is ready, okay? All right, we're going to do that one more, one more time. This time, everything is progressive. The march is going to be progressive. Your kicks are going to be progressive. We're still going to do the arm circles the same. We're still going to do the arms up, and then we're going to hinge, okay? And we're going to feel the stretch in the back of our legs. And then we're going to go on into our assessments for today. So before we start our next set, let's do our reach up with our arms. And let's hinge at the hips and hinge down. And if you feel that you're loosening up in your legs and you want to go a little bit further, then aim to get your palms to the mat or to the floor. And just breathe. And let's inhale and roll up. Slowly, not too fast. You don't want to be dizzy. All right. Very good. One more set. Progressive march, progressive kicks. Arm circles forward, arm circles back. And we're going to do our toe touch. And then we're going to roll up from that. All right? Are you ready? All right, here we go. Going to come forward and march first this time. Last time we did kick first, now we're going to do marches first. Progressive march in five, four, three, two, one. So up, up, up. Okay? Bring those knees up. 90 degree angle in your knees. Soft. Coming down. If you can hear your feet because you have wood floors like I do, that's okay. Just make sure you're not stomping, okay? You don't need a vibration through your spine to know that you're being affected. Inhale and exhale. 20 seconds down, 40 seconds to go because this is for one minute. Good. Pull your belly button in. Almost there. Less than 10 seconds to go. You got five, four, three, two, one, and hold it here for a second. Now we're gonna go into our progressive kick. Are you ready? Remember to kick forward. Kick forward. In three, two, and one. So kick forward. Take your time. Don't lean back, okay? So don't do lean so you can get your kick up. No, we're gonna kick where our hips allow us to kick. Keep your belly button pulled in. Squeeze your glutes to lift your legs. Help lift your legs. Remember to look forward. And your chin should be parallel with your floor. Good. 20 seconds down, 40 seconds to go. You're getting there, you're getting there. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, shake it out. And now let's do our arm circles, so arms out to the side, shoulder height. Get your good posture. Set, feet a little bit wider than the hips underneath the shoulders, and let's circle forward. And just bring your heart rate down here. In three seconds, let's change directions and change. Good. In five seconds, we're going to change back to the front. Two, one, front, arm circles, circling forward. In four seconds, we're going to circle back. Two and one, circling backwards. In 
In four seconds, we're gonna drop our arms. Three, two, one, good. Now let's reach up and we're going to hinge, okay? Stop where your legs say to stop. So belly button pulled in and up. Inhale, now exhale. Fold your body in half, hinge forward, touch your toes if you can. Inhale, exhale. And let's roll up. Inhale, roll up. Again, swing your arms up. Nice controlled swing. Arms right by the ears. Palms are open, fingers stretched. And inhale and exhale, hinge. Touch your toes. Breathe. And let's roll up. One more time. Swing your arms up. Inhale. And exhale. Come on down. And roll up. Very good. All right, assessments. So you started this journey and you decided that you wanted to be a bit more fit. You wanted to start a year off where you are incorporating more of a fit lifestyle and you're working out a little bit more. That's great, right? So you set your goal and you're on your way. But then how do you determine how well you're doing? Well, in the fitness industry and in pretty much a lot of industries, you sometimes may have surveys that are telling you you're doing well based on other people's opinions. Sometimes you have different graphs that will tell you, well, in fitness we have assessments, okay? And these assessments help you to gauge where you are at that moment and then help you to gauge how far you've progressed when you test yourself, again, in some time after practicing certain exercises. So what do I mean by that? So you, you want to know how well you're doing, so you're going to test how, how you're doing. Some things about assessments that you should keep in mind is that whenever you do an assessment in fitness, you must do it the same way that you did it the first time that you did it. So your assessment is controlled. So if I decided to do a six minute walk test or walk assessment, that's a type of assessment that you can do, that means that I'm going to go to a place that I am familiar with and I'm going to walk for six minutes in that place and I'm going to measure how far I walked and then I'm gonna go back to that same place in a couple of months and follow the same route for six minutes of my walk and measure how far I've walked that time. And the thing about assessments, you want to repeat them after a certain period of time. You don't want to do them technically every day. You want to do them after, say, two months, and then at a four-month mark, and then at a six-month mark, okay? With the hopes that you will, in this case, speed up your walk, therefore getting a little bit farther, therefore in that six minutes instead of you walking a half a mile, well you come back in two months you realize that you've walked maybe an entire mile, okay, or an eighth of a mile, okay. Um, then the other type of assessment that you can do is one where you are doing a reach and determining how flexible you are in your legs as well as in your arms. So with this assessment, it allows for you to try to get your fingertips to reach from behind on either side, on both sides. So first on my right side and then on my left side, okay? And what you do is you have a buddy or a partner help you to measure the distance that you've grown in between that time. Now that assessment, you may find that you only progress a couple of inches, all right? Or if not a couple of inches, then portions of an inch, okay? Millimeters maybe. Um, but you also may find that after some 
time of continuously exercising that you reach the goal of touching your fingertips and if not overlapping. Now I have to forewarn you that some people may be double jointed and they're able to reach back there without any trouble. Some may not. And even with tremendous amounts of exercise, you may find that it still takes you time to reach behind on either side. But the goal is that you are one, doing exercises to help you reach that goal, and two, that you're actually assessing how well you're doing. All right, so we've talked about two assessments so far. We talked about the six minute walk test, so that, and the other thing about your walk test, you have to make sure that you're doing the same type of walk in the same way, okay? So that you can be accurate in your assessment. So if your walk started off as a bit of a stroll, okay, then your arm should be at your side, and you should be walking heel, ball, toe, heel, ball, toe every time, all right? And then the second time you come around to do the assessment in two months, you're going to walk the same way, the same route for the same amount of time. Same thing with the reach. You're going to reach in the same place, facing the same wall, starting with the same arm, starting in the same position, okay? Looking forward and reaching out overhand with whatever arm you started with first the last time, as well as the arm that you started with the second time around, all right? So, so far we talked about doing a good warm-up, doing it multiple times. We talked about assessments and a walk assessment that you can do, as well as a reach assessment that you can do. The other type of assessment we can talk about is the one where you are doing a plank. So you want to measure your core strength. So the last time we were together, we talked about planks and push-ups. Well, today we are going to measure our plank. Okay, so the walk test you can do on your own outside, just remember to keep the same um, way of walking. And your arm reach test, okay, you want to make sure that you keep that the same as well. Don't forget to track the measurement in between your fingertips. Have a buddy to help you. Well, now you want to get a mat or be on a soft, firm surface so I can show you how to do your plank assessment. So, for your plank assessment, you want to make sure that you are going to be on the same surface as you were before. Same surface, same position as you were before. When you come down to your mat for your plank, you can start either on your mat or in a standing position. So remember, if we're starting in a standing position, we are standing at the edge of our mat. We are hinging the way we do for a toe touch. We are walking out to the point where our hands are underneath our shoulders, making sure not to drop our hips and making sure to stay on our toes. And this can be a plank position. If when you get here you find that this is uncomfortable to you and your body is telling you it is not yet ready for a full plank, you can always drop your knees and come to a rest plank here. And what you want to do is when you do your assessment, when you're doing your plank assessment, you want to make sure you have a timer handy so you can set that timer as soon as you're ready to start the time. And you want to increase in your plank time every time. You can also come down to an elbow plank, okay, both on your knees and on your toes. Make sure that, again, you haven't dropped your hips and your hips are staying nice and firm. You also want to have your pinky finger down and your thumb up so that your fingertips aren't touching while you're in the plank position. Now, if you find that you have better stability when you're on your hands, then you can stay right there in your plank on your hands. If you have better stability when you're down on your elbows, you want to get down to your elbows as soon as you can. You don't want to stay in one position for 30 seconds and then stay in another position for 30 seconds or however long, therefore changing the variation in, in your body position. You want to keep the same position 
then start, or you want to set your position, then start your timer. When you have dropped your knees, if you're in a full plane, or you dropped your chest to the mat, that's when you stop your timer, okay? So let's try it. Let's try it together. Let's try from a standing point, walking out to a plank, and we're going to hold a couple of planks. Have a sip of water if you haven't had one, and let's do this together. So my feet are at the edge of the mat. I am going to hinge at the hips so I can walk myself out into my plank. Here we go. So coming down to a toe touch, touch position, hinging at my hips, not bending my knees, okay? Not bending my knees to get down to the mat, keeping my legs nice and long, walking it out, okay? And now my hands are underneath my shoulders, my fingers are spread wide, I am in my plank position, so I would click, start my timer. And I would just hold it as long as I can and just breathe, looking down at my mat, and just breathe. And then when I was ready, whenever I would be ready to stop, then I would drop my knee, click, and I'm done timing myself for that, okay? You can do a plank multiple times. You can come back up to your start position, come back up with me, and you can do a regress plank while on your arms. So, let's hinge at the hips again. Let's walk it out, okay? Now my plank is gonna be regressed because I'm gonna drop my knees. Notice I start in a full plank before I decide to regress my plank and drop to my knees, okay? The other thing I want to remind you of or show you, when I'm in my plank, I try to make sure that my ankles are at a 90 degree angle, okay? Not flexed back so my heel is um, more towards the floor or not flex forward so my hips drop toward my mat, but staying nice and firm. Now I decide I wanna to go to my knees. When I'm ready to start timing myself, quick, I touch my timer and I just hold, breathing steadily, making sure that my toes are not touching each other, but my feet are staying in position, even here on my knees. Hands are underneath my shoulders, fingers are spread wide. And when I'm ready to stop, I lower my chest down, click, and I stop my timer, okay? All right, now let's start from here with our plank, okay? This time I'm gonna start with an elbow plank. So I'm gonna place my elbows underneath my shoulders so my chest is off the mat. And my pinky finger is gonna be down and my thumb is gonna be up and my palms are gonna be facing each other. I'm gonna be looking down between the palms of my hands, probably smack dab in the middle, so that I know that my chin is not touching my chest and I'm not gonna be looking back at my knees when I come up in my plank. Then when I'm ready to come up in my plank, I come up first and then I start my timer. So I wanna take a deep breath, I wanna inhale, inhale with me, and then I wanna exhale and come up, and then I wanna start my timer. Click, my timer has started. And I'm just holding. Holding my body parallel to the mat, keeping my belly button pulled tight towards my spine. You know that you're doing a really good plank when your core starts to quiver a bit. And when you're ready, you can come down, drop your knees, click, your timer has stopped. You want to write the time down. As soon as you stop, write the time down. Or maybe you have a timer that will keep all those times without deleting any of the previous ones. However you do it, just make sure you have your tools close. You have your timer, you have your pencil, you have your paper. Then you take a breather. And when you take a breather, if you decide that you want to try a different plank from this position, like we're going to do today, we're going to start with our hands now. And our hands are going to come underneath our, uh, excuse me, our hands are going to come underneath our shoulders and we're going to start from the mat and push up from the mat into a plank, okay? So, hands are gonna be outside of the chest. Instead of elbows underneath the shoulders and chest up, hands are gonna be to the outside of the chest, palm is down, fingers spread wide. We're gonna look down at our mat, at our mat. we're gonna have our timer ready, pencil ready, paper ready, okay? We're gonna to inhale, toes are tucked, ready to receive us, in the sense that our legs are ready to hold us up along with our core once we push up off the mat. Pull your elbows in, inhale, and exhale, push up, okay? 
Check yourself before you start your timer. Don't look back at your feet. Keep your gaze in between your hands and tap your timer and start it. And then hold and just breathe. Just breathe. It's good to focus on something other than the plank. Okay? Inhaling and exhaling. One mistake we often tend to do when holding planks is we hold our breath. There's no need to hold your breath. And when you're ready, you simply drop to your knees, touch your timer to stop it, and then you can write your time down. So we talked about the six minute walk assessment, remembering to walk in the same way, same route, every time. We talked about the arm reach assessment, okay? Reaching behind you with both arms. The aim is for your fingertips to touch. The way your fingertips get to touch is when we're stretching out the um, chest muscles, arm muscles, that helps to uh, lengthen them, and when they're lengthened, that helps you to touch your fingertips at the back, okay? Both sides is what we, what we test, or what we assess, measuring the distance between the two fingertips, two sets of fingertips. The other assessment we did was the plank assessment. We talked about it being one standing position, getting into a plank, being on our hands, on our knees, or on our elbows, okay? Then we went from the standing position to get into a plank to laying on the mat and getting into a plank. Again, from the elbow position to the hand position. And I'm going to show you one more. From the mat, getting into a regressed position with the knees on the mat and the hands on the mat, as well as with the knees on the mat and elbows on the mat. So we're going to do two more sets of planks, okay? All right, first we're gonna do it with the elbows and the knees on the mat. So let's lay down on our mat again. Place our elbows underneath our shoulders, okay? Fingertip down, thumb is up. Toes are tucked, 90 degrees in our ankle. We're going to inhale and we're gonna exhale and come up and hold for a second, then drop to our knees. This is a plank that you can do, start your timer. This is a plank that you can do, okay? This is strengthening your core, this is strengthening your back. I just wanna make sure that when you get into this position, please, 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 do not shift your weight backwards, okay? Yes, it's hard, yes, it hurts a little bit, okay? But these are all the muscles working together to help you strengthen them. And think of it as waking them up from a long sleep, okay? So when you shift your body weight back, hold your plank, keep it where it is. This is not a plank. This is a stretch, okay? When you come here, this is also not a plank, okay? This is actually a strain on your back. So when we're in a good plank position and we've done it the right way, we started the right way, then you are strengthening yourself and building yourself up to do more and to do it better and to help your body on a whole, okay? You can stop your timer, okay? Whenever you're ready, you stop your timer. And it doesn't matter if you've been holding your plank for five seconds or 50 seconds or three minutes. Doesn't matter. The goal is to assess yourself against yourself. We're looking for progress and not perfection, okay? All right, let's go to our plank starting down on our mat. This time, we're going to be on our hands, okay? Do it with me. Hands to the outside of your chest. Tuck your toes, get your body ready. You're going to inhale, and let's come up, exhale, and quickly drop your knees just right there. And this is the plank you can hold. You can hold this. Hold it however long as you want, you want to. Remember, when you come back to assess yourself in a couple of months, you're gonna do the plank the same way. And you may even find that if you started off with a progressed plank, that when you're ready to do the assessment the second time in two months, you might say to yourself, oh my goodness, this is way too easy. I need to change my plank. That is totally fine. Just start another assessment in your new style of plank, okay, your new plank style. So if you may have started on your knees, but then when you in two months do your assessment, you say, oh, I can definitely go to 
my toes for this one. Maybe my toes, but down on my elbow. Stay where you are. Okay? Then that's fine. All right. Come on down. Stop your timer. And I keep saying stop your timer as a reminder. Don't let it keep running. Stop your timer as soon as you come out of that position. Okay? Great. The other thing I want to show you, maybe it's too cold to walk outside. Maybe this arm reach assessment is not enough. Perhaps you don't even want to test your core at this time, but maybe you want to test your endurance a different way while inside your house. Good. That's a great idea. Well, some of us may have steps that we need to step up on. The step outside your door, the curb, the steps inside your house, of course. Basement steps, attic steps, okay? Maybe you have those steps and you want to know, hey, is there an assessment I can do with my steps? Absolutely, okay? Absolutely. So I have a step here. Granted, it's not a real step like that will be in my house or your house, but it's to mimic any one of those step options I mentioned. Your curb. Your step in your house, your step to your basement, your step to your attic. Um, you are you're outside your door, your steps, okay? The way to do that assessment, a step of assessment, okay, is you want to measure how long you can go stepping up on that elevated platform, no matter what it is. How long can you go, okay? If you don't have a step anywhere around you, there are no curves, everything is flat around you, okay? You can always use a stack of books, okay? Make sure they're not glossy books or magazines where you're gonna be stepping up and sliding off, okay? You can use a yoga block if you have to. You can use um, just anything that has some elevation to it. Remember to use the same object every time. If you're using some books, magazines, newspapers, whatever the case may be, be sure that you have the same amount of magazines, the same amount of books, the same amount of newspapers that you're using so that you can keep your measurements the same in regards to the setup of them, okay? So when you do your step assessment, you want to start your timer as soon as you start to step up, 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 down, down, okay? Now, I recommend that you change legs, okay? So if you do three on one leg, you wanna do three on the other leg. Okay? Or you can do one on one leg, one on the other leg. All right? And you're just going to go for as long as you want to go, as long as you feel that you're able to go. When you're ready to stop, you stop. And then you see how far you've gone, how much time you did that step for. I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to do that step for three hours. Okay? But you want to gauge that. You want to gauge how much time. And every time you want to increase the time, okay? Be sure to be gentle with your knees. And be sure that you're putting your whole foot on whatever you're stepping up on, okay? To avoid slip hazards or trip hazards. Or you falling off the bench or your, excuse me, your step or whatever you're using because your heel is hanging off, okay? You're going to have to bend your knees. So... If you have any knee issues, don't do this assessment, okay? If your knees bother you when you bend them in that way, so far, don't do that assessment. Or you can look for a very short step, okay? That way it would be more like that little march that we're doing, okay? Where we are simply marching here in that regress, regress position. Less of a bend in the knees, okay? So we've gone over the six minute walk test. We've gone over the reaches. We've gone over the plank assessment and we've gone over a step assessment. Remember, progress, not perfection. It's just a measurement to gauge how well you're doing for the goal, the fitness goal that you set for yourself and how you're achieving that goal. Always remember, activities of daily living, anything you do on a daily basis, you should be moving in a good way using good form, activating all your muscles to do that movement and complete that movement. Now, we're gonna go into stretching, so let's stretch. So I've added some new stretches in for you today. 
okay? Stretches that you can do on your own and stretches that we're going to do together. So the first stretch I want you to get used to is a neck stretch. Taking your chin, tucking it towards your chest, looking over your chest, trying to gauge your belly button. You are starting in a good posture position to your upright posture. So let me start there with you. Upright, good posture, belly button pulled in, looking forward, shoulders down. Then when you get ready to do your neck stretch, you are taking your chin to your chest, looking over your chest, trying to see your belly button without rounding your shoulders, breathing in and out, making sure you're doing that stretch and holding that stretch for at least 15 seconds. Okay, now let's come on up and look forward. Now we're going to do our next stretch, but tilting our head to one side. So sometimes, or you may have seen this stretch where you start off in a nice forward looking position, good posture of course, and good posture remember means feet underneath your hips, okay, and shoulders roll back and down, looking forward, chin hovering over the chest, belly button pulled in, glutes are engaged because your belly button is pulled in, and your spine is nice and tall. Now the second part to your neck stretch is where you take your ear, whatever ear you want to start with. For me, I'm going to start with my right ear, and I'm going to tilt my head to get it to touch my right shoulder without hunching my shoulder. So notice I didn't start out like this, so don't hunch your shoulder, keep your shoulder down, and you're going to feel a nice stretch on the opposite side. Remember, don't pull on your neck. It's so sensitive. Don't pull on it. Keep your starting form and posture, so good posture here. And then when you're ready to switch sides, you're going to come up to center, and then you're going to switch sides. Whenever you're doing your stretches, not only do you want to breathe during the stretch, but you want to make sure you inhale before you start the stretch. And when you get ready to move, you want to make sure you exhale. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Holding the stretch for at least 15 seconds. Now come upright. So when you're getting ready to do your stretch, just like in the next stretch, I'm going to prepare myself for the next stretch by inhaling. Now I'm going to exhale. And tuck my head. Tuck my chin. Okay. Then when I'm ready to come out of my stretch, I'm going to inhale and prepare myself. And exhale and come up. Okay, good. Now let's try another one. Let's try shoulder rolls, more of a mo mobile stretch, an active stretch. So a shoulder roll, instead of holding our arms out to the side where we do arm circles, your arms stay at your sides next to your thighs, and you're going to take your shoulders and you're going to roll them forward. Okay, now with this shoulder roll, you're going to breathe while you're, move while you're doing the movement, okay? So you don't have to do the inhale, prepare, and exhale roll. You're going to breathe while you're doing the movement. Inhale, exhale. See, I'm pulling my shoulders up towards my ears. I am, when I come back, meaning to restart my stretch, I'm pulling my shoulder blades together in the back. Okay? And when I'm ready to roll it forward, I'm pulling my shoulders up. They're almost touching my ears, and then I'm rolling them forward. And when I roll them forward, I almost look like I'm caving in, but because I'm pulling my belly button in, my belly button is squeezing my glutes, keeping my spine upright, and all I'm doing is I'm feeling a stretch throughout the top of my shoulder and throughout the top and upper part of my back, okay? That's where you want to feel the stretch. And we definitely want to do that stretch today with all the planks we tried, so roll forward. Good. And roll forward. Again. And roll forward. Inhale, exhale. Good, now let's go back. Very good. Last stretch we're going to try today is our wrists and hands. So when we are stretching our wrists and our hands, we want to hold our arms out. Our elbows can be bent or arms can be extended. And we simply want to rotate our wrists Okay, in one direction for 15 seconds, and then in the opposite direction for 15 seconds. 
okay? Especially, maybe you suffer from carpal tunnel or arthritis in the hands and the wrist. Great exercise to do. Great stretch. And you can just switch directions intermittently. Or you can do one direction for 15 seconds and the opposite direction for 15 seconds. So we just reviewed the next stretch. Forward, right, left. The, the shoulder roll forward and backward as well as our wrist rotations, okay? Now, if you stop with me and do three breaths, this is a way that we tell our body we are done for the day, and we're telling it, good job, right? So come on down, inhale, bring your arms up, palms are facing each other while my arms are extended in the air. Turn your palms on and exhale. Again, inhale, palms are facing, and exhale. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad you're still with me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now.